Why is there a rewrite of the audio DAT software, Dave? Think Extronical cocked it up, Doug. Roll the titles. Hi and welcome to Extronical. This is the second release of the Audio DAC software which has been pretty much rewritten and not because there was anything technically wrong with the first version but because as I mentioned in the video from the previous version on the website and on the website it was highly possible changes would occur as the functionality of the software expanded. It was realised almost right away that in order to allow mixing of sound that fundamental changes would be needed but thankfully, this doesn't affect any use of the library that much. It's just that the library itself needed a complete rewrite. Reason had to be so dramatically rewritten, which did take some considerable time, mostly due to technical issues with the ESP32 compiler, and of course some self-introduced books. So, interrupts must be as quick as possible. With the new code, the main playback routine would have had to work a lot harder and so the heavy workload had to be moved from the interrupt routine and into the main loop in some sort of way. I wanted to allow for multiple channels uh, as a channel is just like a sound, a voice as some computers would call it, I'd call it channels of voices, basically how many different things you could play at once so you could have um, a WAV file playing and then a music instrument at the same time and they would be mixed. Uh, I wanted to allow for easier future expansion of the code which means it definitely had to come out of that interrupt routine. So with that said, how badly did it break anyone's existing code? Well, let's bring up the previous sample code from the previous video and change it to make it work with the new library. So if we just add this line here, then that is it. Just to prove it works, we'll compile. Also, obviously the circuit hasn't changed at all. The force will be with you, always. The force will be with you, always. The force will be with you, the force. The force will be with you, always. The force will be with you. And there it is, playing the default example the WAVs are generated in exactly the same way as shown in the previous video. I'll link that video in above and in the description down below as well. So what's this buffer filling thing all about, I hear you say? Well, you might not have said it, but I'm going to tell you anyway. In the previous library, the interrupt routine did all the work of getting the byte to play, playing it, and it did all this in real time. Uh, but as mentioned, uh, I had to do more to manipulate those bytes in the future for different effects, etc. Like the mixing of sounds. This starts to put too much of a strain on that interrupt routine. So, just like YouTube videos buffer videos for smoother playback, I had to buffer the, this routine so that the bytes to be played could be got manipulated as we want and then put in a buffer ready for the interrupt routine to just simply send to the DAC. So you may also ask, what is a buffer? You might not have asked this as well, but anyway, I'm going to tell you again this answer as well, okay? Here's a graphic that I spent minutes creating. A buffer is just an area of memory of whatever size you need. To implement our buffer, we need three variables. Next play pause points to the next byte sent to the DAC. Next fill pause is a position to put the next byte to play by the routine that gets the bytes to play. And last fill pause is the last part of the buffer that can be filled, nothing beyond that. Using these three variable pointers, our various routines can fill and read from the buffer without trampling each over each other's data or unplayed bytes. So the fill buffer routine here simply looks at what is required to be played and puts those sound bytes in the buffer, manipulating them as required. The intro routine is very simple, it just looks at whether there is a byte to send to the DAC and sends it to the DAC. It's in the, it's in the main loop where we fill the buffer that we do the work. How big should this buffer be? 
As I mentioned, the buffer is an area of memory, but how much do we need and where is that value set? The buffer size is dictated in the header file for the library. So use a text editor, use the easiest thing, such as Notepad++, to open it. So to do that, go to your Arduino library folder. It's within your sketches folder. Go into the folder there and open it here. You can see by default, it's 600 bytes. Now this is, in more circumstances, probably way too much. The size you need for the buffer depends on how slow your main loop is running, which depends on how much work it does. For myself writing games mostly that send a lot of data to the screen very often, the main loop can be relatively slow, and so you need a large-ish buffer. If your main loop executes quite fast, you'll need a small buffer, and you would change the amount you need here. But, how do you know how much is enough? You don't want too little, or your sounds will play slower, and not sound right. If you have too much, then you're just wasting valuable RAM on these small microprocessors. Luckily, just for you, I've written a routine in the library to tell you how much buffer your code is actually using, regardless of the buffer size. Let's bring up that code, Oh, let's bring up the code we had before, and all we need to do is to add this line here. And as this routine reports the size of buffer used via the serial interface, we also need to set up the buffer in our setup function here. Open your serial monitor, make sure it's set to uh, 115200 board speed, down there, and we'll compile and run the code. So, zero bytes. Basically the main loop is running so fast that buffer is barely filling up at all. But due to the way the buffer routines work, the smaller size you can make your buffer is three bytes. Do not go lower than that, else it just will not produce sound. So let's change that 600 to three bytes and check. So all that works fine. But obviously, this routine works really fast. There's nothing to it. Let's do a more realistic example of where the main loop runs a little slower because it's doing more hard work. We'll simulate this by adding a delay command to slow the main loop down a bit. And now we're just using around 50 bytes of a buffer, but we've, all, but we've only got it set to three. So that sounds plays so slowly, it's not even legible of whatever sound it is. So let's up that buffer to 50 bytes. Now it's perfect again. Just to show you that the, the sign was playing slower if you have too small a buffer, we'll alter the buffer to 30. Reupload. So that's the worst that will happen with too small a buffer. But 
also setting too big a buffer waste memory. So use this command to optimise your buffer usage. Unless you're doing something like sending a lot of data over R squared C or something similar in your main loop, then you should only need a really small buffer. So what if your loop runs really slow? Could this affect your sign playback? Well, no. Not if the buffer is big enough. So, to get this latest version of the library, go to strongto.com, basics, audio, playing WAVs updated. Here you'll also find the full write up that accompanies this video. Scroll down and click here to download. Now, if you've already installed the previous Dacodo library, you'll need to remove that. Just go to the libraries folder where we were before, where we were before. click on the Dacoder library and just delete it. Restart your Arduino software, go to sketch, include library, add .zip library and add it. You will now find the examples we've just used here. So that's it for now. In the next episode, we'll update this library to do more so that it can be used on our Frogger project to handle the sounds. It's been some time since we've worked on that, as it's required this older library writing first. If you've not seen those videos, Frogger, I'll put a link into the playlist in the corner kind of now. And so until next time, see you later.